and you can get the height and send everything to the internet through a microcontroller through, a microcontroller, through SMS. So SMS in Africa is pretty cheap. So use that. So that's one example that what this network, what this technology, what this summit does. But uh, so that's that's one of the products I just told the mobile child monitoring. So some slides about that. But this summit started 2007, and there was just summits, just July uh, that happened, or just in December, just one month summit, two month summit. And one of the problems that we work about social impact is how can you keep the continent of the project, how you keep the project going and project coming and keep going. And from this moment, IDDS became IDIN, they call International Developed Innovation Network is a international network that work with this kind of project and become bigger than just the summit. And to get at this, uh, I like to I like to say about how you can go up in the design process. So if you think about this summit, we work a lot with design to and design with. What I mean if I say design to design with, when I say design to, so I I get some pre-requirements, I talk to some people, I came into my place and I produce the technology and I make the project. And after I return and give the project. So I'm doing a design to someone. But when I tell about design with, I get someone, I get people from the local, from the local culture and bring them to the design process to produce, to, to make the technology, to make the solution. And they also co-create the solution with us. So they, they create, the, uh, we, we create the technology together. But I think the the most the most impactful the most uh, our belief that the most uh, the best way to really regenerate impact is design by when we don't design together but we teach the design tools we teach the maker movement to people and they can produce their own solutions and we believe on that and if you think on this way uh, together with the continuer idea a lot of names start to come for our mind. So you think that we could do a place inside of a local area, in our case, in our favela, in our communities, that could keep doing this project happening, that happens in the summit, or better than that, could do more project, could instigate, could, could, could decrease the energy to produce more projects. So all these names came to our mind, tech space, hacker space, Innovation Center, Fab Labs, Makerspace, all these letters. And we realized that what we need is some community space to make, to build whatever they want. What they want to build, right? Or better, what we want to build because today I'm part of the same community. I live in the same community. So on this moment, I need to talk about this woman. So her name is Leah. She's the leader of the community where we work today. Uh, the name of the community is Vila Nova Esperança in Portuguese. We can call in English New Hope Village. It's a village of 600 people, uh, 3,000, sorry, 600 families, 3,000 people, and small village. And we started to think about that idea, oh, how can we build this place inside of a favela, inside a community in Sao Paulo, that could support projects, that could instigate more projects. And we realized that we started to talk to some favelas, with some community members, with some associations, some leaderships, and we met this. And today we say that they choose us to do the project and not we choose them to do the project because we are the same, like we are on the same, the same place. And she's a strong, She's a strong leader in this community. So the, here you can see the first sign inside the community. You already can see the roads behind. The roads, it's, all, all the roads inside of the community like that. And so she has worked for the last three years, two years, sorry, for the last 10 years, <coughs> being leader of the association, of uh, the community. And when we start to talk to her, the first time that we start to talk to her, we start to do some questions about, hey, how can we work together? Like, what do you like? And she started to say, uh, I like handcrafts, 
the community members like handcraft, the community members like learning by doing, but maybe how, what, what you can do, how, how you can keep in work, or we can have more ideas, and she said something about maybe we could do a protein incubator, because I talked a little bit about what it did, uh, just briefly, and she said something about do new projects inside of the community, do greenhouse, they want to do an ecological village inside. So we keep it talking, keep it talking, and she came with the social technology center. Good, so the community already has an idea, the organization, that they want to do something similar about what people from outside want to do. So it's not something that just people from outside is coming, and do inside. So there is some synergy. There are some goals in the point of view. There are some visions that go at the same, to the same place. So we find a match, right? So there's the two sides that maybe has the same vision, is a little fuzz yet, but maybe they can work together. But the good thing about start the center, and that's the logo of the centers, Innovation Center Villa Nova Esperanza, it's how we start to do things. How, how we can uh, uh, give the first step to do something. And I can say that we spend three months, four months, just create a relationship it's before to do any hands-on activity, before build anything, before implement anything. And to do that, we did emails. Maybe not. We did meetings. No. We did conversations, not a lot. I gave lectures, no, they, they, don't, they don't care about lectures. Uh, I call them, no. One of like, the main good ways to start to work in hands-on activities of them. What I mean with hands-on activities of them? Uh, don't talk a lot about what you want to do, don't make a lot of projects, but start to work together. People, when I say work, is work with hands-on activities, like do some things. And in this case, they have a big garden inside where they, they like to crop, they, they, they like to, where they got their food. And at least once a week or once or two weeks, we, come, we came to there and stayed together then working, working, working. And okay, you have a heavy tool to do get the habit to, to do, even if you are from outside. At the same time that we start to work with your body, with your hands, they start to realize that, oh, okay, this guy is doing the same thing than me. So he's not someone that's just coming and talk and talk and talk. Maybe I want to meet him better. And we start to create a relationship. We start to create a same level of talking. And when you do this kind of hands-on hands activity on them, uh, we create two things that for me, it's the basic of any relationship, that's, and sorry, the basic of any solid project, that's the relationship and the empathy. So at the same time that we create relationship and they start to trust on us, and we start to be not them and not us, but we all together, we also can see empathy, we also can see better what the problems that we can start to work, before to say anything about how we are going to do the project. So you guys are gonna realize that this project is very organic, and it, it wants to be very organic, very unique, because you need to get ownership on the community, you need that ownership inside of the village, of the people where we work. But what should be our second step? So, okay, now that we work together, we create a relationship, we create empathy, we are a good, we are a good network inside of the community, uh, should be more emails, meetings, conversation, letters to do things? No. Again, we work as makers, we work as designers. So the second time, hands on activity of us. So how's the best way to show what we have to show? Is doing things. So we start to do workshops inside the communities. How to build staff, how to build electronics how to build uh, mechanical things, how to build ideas where you can use post-sheets, how to build uh, brainstormings and all that stuff, always doing things with the body. 
And the good thing about that, so that's one of the pictures about we did. In the, mid, in the picture of the middle, okay, we need to finalize with a barbecue because they like this kind of party and we, we like a glassberry party. It's always good to, to keep it, the energy growing. But the good thing, when you, we brought some hands-on activities from us, they kind of show test knowledge. One thing that I realized is that when you talk a lot in space, some space, maybe people don't have it, they, 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 are, some, they are kind of shy or they don't have the right open to show what they can do. But when you give a space, they work together, they can show. And maybe sometimes they don't know that they show. They, they don't know that they know. So you give that kind of space so that they can work and show that they know. And the second thing is about curiosity. Curiosity is the first step to get engagement, to get momentum for the next step. So after three months and four months, we work with that, we get four words. The first word is a place to start the space. And that's a good story because, I don't know, uh, anyone who knows here about the word combi? The Volkswagen combi. Right? We can see a lot of that in Brazil, mainly in poor area. And there's a Volkswagen Kombi inside of this favela. And we start the maker space inside of this favela in a garage. So every day at 10 a.m., the Volkswagen Kombi leave the garage, stop outside, park outside, and the maker space starts to happen. I'm going to show you some videos so you can see better. And every day at 5 p.m., the Volkswagen Kombi come back and stop inside. So we need to do some flexible maker space where you can park a car and you, you, can, you can don't need to park a car and use that space. What that's good, because if you came before with your whole project, try to find and try to fill this project inside the community, we know that it's not going to work. So we start to project the work together, the space together with them. So as you guys can see, the whole innovation center is also a prototype. The whole innovation center is also a design process, a maker move where each step that you build, you will see what's the next step. If you doubt to have a, uh, a next, uh, 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 well-defined next stage. And also handcraft, community radio, and crochet. So it was the three workshops they asked in the workshops that we did before. So we started to do that. Uh, before, before we do these real workshops, we start to do the reform in the place, uh, where, I t as I told before, there was a garage, and in the first, in the first floor, there was a lot of things inside. After that, we reform a little bit, and we reform a little bit more. And one thing that's interesting, always people, when you talk about makerspace, they say, okay, what, what, what should I do inside of, my, what should I put inside of my makerspace? Uh, what the level of technology should I put inside of my makerspace? And in my first, in my opinion, I think that just necessary to people go inside. Nothing more than that. Because more than, like the most important thing in a makerspace is the community that you're building around. And the community need to have ownership on that. So if you put a lot of tools inside, maybe I can scare people because they don't know how to get in. It's not there. They, they are not friendly with that. But if they ask about the machines, they ask about the tools, good. So we buy after they ask. So as I said before, three projects we start, right? So just necessary to open. And we did just necessary to open. So in January 2014, we have just a blank space. Without nothing, without tools, some basic tools with a table, um, some garbage around, but that's not garbage, that's sustainability because we can use that to do projects. Uh, some women doing workshops in the front, they were doing the handcraft workshop, as they said before. Uh, someone of them already started their radio community project inside. And Mm -hmm. And we start to do 
workshops, workshops about what they said before. So we did workshops of, uh -huh. go ahead, Phil. Yeah, great. So we did our workshops of websites that where we brought some projectors, we, we called some people inside, that's one of the, the, we did three, and that's one of them. So we, give, we gave certificates, and we did workshops of selling bags, because they asked it, they would like to, <laughs> to work on that, and learn these basic tools. I know that's not high technology, but it's what they want. So they are getting ownership on that. So they are learning, that's, that's <laughs> Kelly. This was her first bag that she does in her life. And she started to come more in the community, in the innovation center after she learned how to do this too. Good. Bye. Let me take out this guy here. And we did more workshops. We did workshops of electronics, where we called the people around the community and we, we taught them uh, welding, we taught them glue, we taught them how to do lanterns, how to do uh, lights, how to, how to put lanterns in the mirrors, how to put lanterns in their bicycles, so all that stuff. But we realized one thing. We just use it to, we use it just open the workshop, the hour space in the workshop times. So <laughs> the space don't open every time. Don't open 24 hours per day. We use it to open just the time of the workshops. And we like to keep the projects keep it going, to projects uh, keep it happening. We used to need to open the space 24 hours per day. And then we get, we start to get a staff for that. And this guy, his name is Tempei, and he's a maker like with good hands. And because we start to open 24 hours per day, new projects start to happen. So that's a low cost solar water heater that we have in all our communities. So new ideas start to come. This is Celsius, it's not far behind. So that's not. So what we can see, uh, more projects here. That didn't work well. So the community radio, as, I said, well, as we said before, we brought people from outside that could figure out this community radio. So just to tell a little bit about this project, uh, and if the most favelas in Brazil, it, the internet's pretty bad. 3G, it's pretty bad. So that's the one guy, he knows how to hack uh, internet connection from outside of the community. So he puts a uh, kind of antenna and he made a wireless connection, a closed wireless connection in his community, in our community. And you start to use this to broadcast radio through the wireless because in Brazil, uh, if, he, if you wanted to build a radio, you need to get license from the government. And that's a huge time, that's expensive, you need to have the project. So. If you use the 2.4 gigahertz, that's the wireless connection, we don't care because the government is open for that. So use, start to use this wireless to do the, 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 the community radio. And at the other point, we put speakers. So here they are testing some speakers and broadcast from this, this computer. So projects start to happen after that. And that's one of the, the part that I like it too. It's a micro lantern. It's pretty easy. Happens inside, you guys are gonna start to see that the project inside is pretty simple because it's what they do. It's the way that they think. It's the way that we think.
Here we go. Right? So cheap. I really like this project. So it's cheap. Uh, it's sustainable. And it's good because every time that happens a project like that inside the innovation center, you can see in the other days everyone using, everyone building their stuff. Because one children or one dad or one younger came into the space, built and showed to everyone. And they start to spread. And they start to say, oh, I want to build one, I want to build one, I want to build one. And that's good because bring our own technologies, bring people from our own place. But we know that if in this beginning we should do some 3D printing or some laser cut, we are not building our community yet because it's too far from the reality. So we need to step by step. It's slow, take time. But you know that we are going. You know that we are going to the front and keeping the process. So also, uh, steady radio, they start to do inside. So got like boxes and they put all the stuff behind and they put in the car. Oh, sorry, I put one high. So it's stuff behind the, the speaker. So we put a little design and that's Marcio. He's really good and work if you would and together with the pain and also with electronics. And we also to do uh, technology to do technology, right? And we build like late to wood using local material. So that's a late that you can start using a driller. And this sense, you just use and you can and you can do anything if you would. If you would. That's good, right? I like that too. It's easy to build this stuff. It's easy to build the technology, to build the technology, and also just stop that. Uh, I'm stop this. Okay, so. Okay, so we build all that stuff. But we realized that how this project started, we have an initial investment and from IDIN, as I said before. But one of the, our goals is to build a business model, not to work just as an NGO, fundraising and all that stuff, but really have a business model around this. And one of the things that for us was really impactful, in the beginning of this year, we got to be selected, or we got to, to come for a new network that has been amazing, that's the, the GIG, the Global Get gather innovation. Uh, yeah, so that's the picture. And we stay like two weeks in Berlin. Just think about in our, in our goal, like in our vision, how could do this uh, more sustainable and not just think about from the race and not just think about energy and all that stuff. And we got really good insights. We got really good connections on that. And today we are close to our uh, business model to our sustainability, we are providing um, courses of social innovation in Sao Paulo to richer high schools. What happened? I don't know if you guys heard about it, but Brazil is on the, the country with the bigger gap between richer people and poor people, like it's a huge gap. So some people live across the street, they have a lot of money, but they never went to a favela or to a community. But some parents, they know that it's important to know this reality. So they want to pay for this and more. They want to pay for how make my son think about design tools, how to think about such innovation, how to think about produce new technology, not just for the 10% of the world has happened today, but uh, for the other 90% of the world. And we start to provide this kind of courses. Any all the profit that came for this course for the for the high schools came for the innovation center to keep the innovation center growing inside of the community. Our second challenge right now, after two years, is the high tech part. We got a challenge. We got an award in Brazil of a foundation. We're not gonna buy a laser cut. It's gonna be our first uh, high tech uh, high high solution inside, how, high product, high device inside. 
And we are really curious how people is going to deal with this machine because we have the ownership of them of the space. We have the momentum, the, we have the inspiration for them, but we know that's going to be some challenge, uh, how to model, how to teach, to work with the computers. So that's one of the challenges that we have right now. And I just want the, the laser cut. And our third challenge is bigger space. So all that stuff that I just showed it to, we, I, after I can, I can send you the link after our, our YouTube channel, uh, become a lot. And our space became small. So we rent a space, another space, in the beginning of this year, in the front of our space. But became small again, because we've got new tools, we need materials to build new things, and after we talked to the community about rent this space, that's the second space, the community came to us through Leah, the association, and said, hey, you know, you guys doing a really good thing inside of the community. So take this space here that's ours, and build a new space where we don't need to pay rent anymore. You don't need to rent and you need to give money, because why are you going to pay for renting if you are guys doing things for us? So they find a lens for us, and we start to do a fundraising for this initial invest to build the new space. That's pretty new, like it happened in the last two, three months. And we have a design at least, we have a vision doing inside of the community with your workshops, using uh, 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 their own ideas, how should be that, how should be that, and the good thing is because they came with the idea not to do an innovation center, but to do a community space. So the how building is going to be the community space, and innovation center is going to be just a part of that. So we start to be connected and really create things inside of the community and not be something outside, even if it's inside. Because they really understand how the innovation center can work. My question for you, like, that I always think is, imagine if you like, came in the beginning, in the beginning of two years with this project, that's not gonna happen, right? Because something from outside, something with, find without vision. So uh, every, every near step is really important, more than the result, the process for us to build this innovation center is more important because we are building ownership, we are building, uh, uh, we are building knowledge. We are showing what we want to do together. And just to show that, I have a last video. So that's the space. And we start to work about There's nothing, I know. It's going to be a long journey again. But we are excited for that. Good. Go ahead. So we know that this beginning, we know that we're going to start another story. Right now, I hope in the future I can talk again or can, we can speak and I, we can have the, that whole building or at least in half of that building or at least nothing. But people are still working and produce their own technologies. So I know that I finalized a little bit early, but thanks so much for coming here. Okay. First of all, let me thank you for this very insightful talk, Miguel. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions, uh, please line up at the microphones here at the hall. Um, Signal Angel, do we have any questions from IRC? Doesn't look like it. No. <laughs> um, the front right microphone, please. Hello, thank you for your presentation. I'm wondering, so all the things you did were mainly guided, and the kids were not really playing around with stuff, creating something completely new by themselves? Or No, no. They do things by themselves. So the, the product that I show you here, they do for themselves. 
is organically. We are not giving some guidance. We do guidance through the workshops. We have something inside of the, the Innovation Center that we call Build It, as a workshop that happens every Saturday, where we build something that we already know. For example, bags, in the beginning that I showed the workshop. For example, chairs with pallets. For example, uh, websites, everything like this uh, are workshops. With, with the, those knowledge, they started the new project. And how much new stuff did they build that is really constructive for the community? Yes. How much in comparison to the guided things? Uh, <coughs> I think it can seem even like the same. The, we have like workshops happening at the same time. We have this, this technology, this product that they are doing. And the good thing about that, some of the people that build the technology, they also become instructors inside and build these workshops. And, it, and that's the cycle mm -hmm. that we're keeping there. Okay, uh, got your answer? Yeah. yeah. Great. The front left microphone, please. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much for this project. It's beautiful. Um, I'd like to know if you have contacts with uh, other spaces like the Garoa Acrospace or uh, the Redemo Cambos in Campinas? No, I don't know this space, but Let's it's talk. good to know. Yeah, we have a good, a good connect because of the idea of your lab. We have talked to them, if we also observe, uh, lab laboratory observe in Rio de Janeiro, but this in Campinas, I don't know. And I would love to have these connections because what do you want to know, want to be, it's kind of a gate to getting in the community. Because they really understand that the worst part is creating relationship. It's create and articulate people inside. And we have that. So now we, we want partners that know technology and we can figure out all the theater and it, they can work together for us. Please, please join us at the Anarchist Village at 2. We are going to have a talk on hack bases. Great, and I'll be we there. can talk about Thank you. more about this. Again, front left, please. Thank you, for, thank you for a great talk. It was real nice. Um, I have a question which might be a little bit off topic, but I believe that some of us in the West have a bit dim idea of a favela and the people who live there, and there are many stereotypes and things like this. Uh, could you please uh, say a few words about how the re regular everyday lives of those people in the favelas are and what they do, what do, get the, what do they get their income for, from? Things like this. Okay, so the most people that work in favela, they work, a, they are employee of someone or they don't have a formal job. So they are brick lawyers, they are vigilants, they are people that work in house for some people. Uh, they don't do a, a, a wage per month. They do one thing that we call bico, so one job here, one job there, one job there. So day by day is the day that they take, not planning a lot to the future because <laughs> we know that we need to buy something now, so I need this money. I know they need to buy my food tomorrow, so I need this money. Um, they are really far from the, main, from, from the center of the city where they work. And the worst thing, because this community that we, where we work is in the middle is between the city of Sao Paulo and Taboão. And because the between is right the between, the, the between. For example, this Villa Nova Esperança. The main street that divides Sao Paulo and Taboão is this street. So for who you complain about problems? It's always a, a problem there. Because you, if you go to the Sao Paulo uh, government, they say, oh, that's not our problem, it's Taboão. If you go to Tabo, that's our problem, it's Sao Paulo, and it stay like that. And it, it's, really, it's really hard there. So this community, it's around two hours, two hours and a half of the center of the city. So they spend around five hours per day, even six hours when it rain or have a lot of traffic or before vacations to go and to come back from their jobs. Uh, a lot of children around. Um, yeah, so I think it's one of the realities that we have there. We can say, you, you ask about uh, average income. Between 500 and 1,000 uh, reais, that's kind of 200 US dollars. Between 200 and 400 US dollars. Okay, great. Right. The real left microphone, please. Um, Go ahead. Uh, it's really 
Great project. Um, and I was really curious about uh, what you said about the antenna and the radio. So what do they actually send? Did they set up a station for, for sending things or how did okay, this Okay, let me tell you the whole story about that. Okay. So there's this guy, his name is Marcio. He's 35 years old and he's quiet, he's shy. But he's pretty, pretty good like how hack things. And he used it to work in the northeast of the country in a company that provide internet. But the company failed in the northeast and happened a lot in Brazil. People came from the north to the south to get a better life. Uh, and this company that failed just forgot all the antennas, all the staff, all the hardware of him, and he kept it. So when he came to the south, he brought that staff of him, and he started to live in this favela. He didn't have internet, anything, and he said, hey, I know how to steal this guy. I know how to hack that. So he got a like, kind of a wood, what you use a, as a brush, to do the, the rest of the antenna. He got some of the, the hardware that he has, and he put it on his house. And he gets a sign, a, a radio sign. And outside, he found a wireless connection that was open it. And this wireless connection, he talked to the guy because he found the guy that was responsible for that. And the guy opened the wireless connection for him for some amount for month. That's not allowed, but they make a deal between them. So he used it to pay, I think, around 90 reais. That's around 20 US dollars uh, for this guy to get his internet, to get a, a, a connection on that. And this connection is open inside of the community. So in the beginning, it was her, her, just his family. But after that, he started to sell that for other community members and make business. And that's one interesting thing. When you work in favelas, if you, want, you are looking for innovation, looking for two things, illegal things, because of needs, that someone is working on that, right? Or we call that gambiarra. That's the earliest stage prototype. And he got this, uh, this connection, and we thought, oh, this guy's smart. We have a problem of community radio here. How can we use this wireless connection to help the community radio? Because before, we made a lot of research about community radio, and we thought to use the wireless, normal wireless. We thought to use electricity wireless, but electricity inside the community is pretty bad, because they steal, they steal also the electricity. Uh, and we, we saw some research about to use the wireless connection and get a laptop computer, use the, uh, a software, the name is Shoutcast. I don't know if you guys heard about it. So you, you can do a server, so you broadcast in the wireless, and anyone can use their whole, their whole cell phone to hear the community radio. But if, when you think about cell phones inside of the community, even cell phones need to be smartphones, and smartphones, People that are rich inside the favela, they have a smartphone. But people that are middle class or poor inside the favela because there's also a gap inside the favela, they don't have that stuff. So to disseminate that stuff, we thought to do using speakers that we call hotspots. So that's one of the prototypes that we did, where we put hotspots inside the favela in each corner. And through a Arduino or Raspberry Pi P, uh, you get the wireless connection and transform in audio and you can pass for the other community. Great, but even this we're not working with our whole community because we are just achieve the richer and the middle class. And the poor people that stay around the community, inside the community, and never leave their house before. Because there are some people that they never leave their house because someone helped them. And, and they stay really, really far away. They just has that FM radio, really old. So using the same uh, Raspberry Pi, it was possible to produce a FM sign, getting the wireless connection in a small potency, small, uh, a small radio potency. That's not illegal for the government, and you can pack it in the whole community. That's one of the stories about the community radio. Awesome. Okay? Good. The front right microphone, please. Yes, um, I'm wondering what is the ratio of kids and then if we're maybe talking about adults, about the male and female ratio as well, because I'm not sure how many people actually have to work each day and so they do not have time to go into the makerspace or after work they don't In the have community any. or in the innovation center? Um, There's different both. things. Both of them, okay. Uh, the most women that 
live inside of the community, they are between 20s and 30s, okay, so something like that. Uh, children have a lot of younger children because the community is a little younger, so they, the com this community have bar has born a, was born, I think, three, 30 years ago. It's not old community, old favela. Uh, but inside of the innovation center, the average, we have more between 12 and 16, right? And they are women, they are men, that's this kind of the same. But we have th this kind of workshop, focus on adults. So one thing that I realized is that this from 12 to 16, they like to come and get new energy and do things, but they don't do things for longer. They don't do things like uh, long projects. The adults, it's harder to instigate, to motivate, but when they get motivated, they can do projects longer. For example, the community radio is one example. The internet radio is one example. So we don't need to do the workshops for the younger, the workshop focus on the, the adults because we, need, we need, really need to call them. And for the younger, it's more organic. They just come and start to build stuff. You know, have someone there to teach them the tools and all that stuff. But what's the ratio in the numbers? How many parents, how many adults do you actually engage in comparison to the kids? By uh, uh, between parents and kids. So I can, we can say that we have one parent to around three, four kids. Okay? Something like that. So. Are there any more questions? None. Well, thank you very much, Miguel okay. Chavez.